SME Souk podcast brought to you by Rackbank Business. Your business matters. SMEs are the lifeline of UAE's economy. Whether it's a grocery store in Abu Dhabi, a thriving online business in Dubai, or a manufacturer on the hills of Ras Al Khaimah, you keep all the seven Emirates on the move. We proudly present you Ragbank SME Soup podcast series. Hi, you're listening to the SME Soup podcast. I'm Brandy Scott. And today we are going to be looking at the realities, the challenges and the opportunities for SMEs right on the ground from a man who has a great vantage point. He not only helps them get established, but he then helps them to thrive. He is Rami Jalad. He is the CEO of the Razalkaima Economic Zone, or Rekez, and he's in the studio with me today. Rami, it's lovely to have you. Wow. Brandy, thank you very much for having me on the SME Souk podcast it's really a pleasure to be here today. And what a topic. Everybody's talking about it. It's been thriving. It's growing. There is a lot of things being done in that space. And thank you for inviting me to share what I know about that industry and about SMEs in general. Well, let's dig straight into what you know. How would you describe the, the current landscape for small and medium businesses at the moment? Well, there's never been a better time in the UAE. And globally, I think, but I'm here to really talk about UAE. And SMEs are obviously contributing, the largest contributor to to the number of companies and the number of startups and the number of entrepreneurs that are growing exponentially in the UAE. Today, 94% of businesses in the UAE are all SMEs, small, medium enterprise. And the startup ecosystem that supports that or the larger corporates and manufacturers ecosystem that support that is also thriving. So I think there's never been a better time. Um, and it also it's another big employer which really contributes to the growth in that SME space. And today there's not an SME that is not a supplier or a vendor to anything that we own, use or in our day to day lives or in business. So it's a great time. Okay, well, let's look at, I mean, you said growth a couple of times in there. You only need to be on the roads of the UAE at the moment or enrolling a child in school to feel the growth in the population. What are you seeing at Rikiz in terms of the number of of new licenses, of of new startups? Well, the growth has been tremendous. Again, I'm using the word growth. I mean, in 2022, we saw 17% growth in SME startups and SME companies and SME licenses. In 2023, we're seeing that to be a 34%. So right now, that is a testament to what's happening overall in the market in the UAE. So um, and and they come from all walks of life, you know, and all industries. So it could be uh, personal goods, it could be consultants, it could be marketing, advertising, e-commerce, IT. So you can see that they have grown and mushroomed into every single sector and industry that you can imagine and think of, even medical, insurance, applications, gaming, tourism, you name it. Is there any trend that you're seeing or trends in terms of the sectors that may be seeing more growth than others? Well, I think we're all, you know, very in tuned after what we've gone through in Corona and being, you know, isolated for a very long time. People are buying a lot of things online and that's a habit now. And some people have a nasty habit of buying lots of things online. But definitely there's a lot a lot of uh, consumer goods, fast moving consumer goods, lifestyle um, uh, uh, um, products and services, healthcare. um, um uh, personal health, wellness, and um, a lot of um, IT because let's not forget the SME are really very in tuned with the latest technology in the world and going into the IT space, software applications, and digital transformation and AI as well. So these are the trends and these are the big topics and these are the big industries that the SMEs are starting to fuel and what we are really seeing as new industries around the world. Where are these companies coming from? Those that are registering and setting up with with you, what does the geographic spread look like in terms of where those companies are originating from or their founders? What's interesting to see is that there's a massive local growth of industry that is organic, SMEs that are coming out of the UAE, the region. And that's really something to be proud of. 
But of course, let's not forget that now there are lots of nomads, lots of transient people, people who are, can be flexible and move around and work from home. So you see SMEs or work remotely, you see SMEs coming from all over the globe, a lot from Asia, a lot from, 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 from Saudi Arabia and, and actually from Europe. And so it's, I would say it's global. Uh, Indian SMEs, especially in the IT space, is, is, um, is growing. But um, uh, I see that this is really a, uh, a, a trend to get them from all walks of life in all parts of the world. So UAE is a melting pot and it's a hub for business. So they all want to be here. People saw what happened during Corona and COVID, that there weren't massive lockdowns. Business as usual. Business thrived here. So everybody wants to be here. Everybody wants a piece of the action. And that's why we see them from all over the world coming here to set up their companies and entrepreneurs or startups and smaller businesses to use it as a hub, to use it for the UAE market and expand globally. Okay, so let's look at what they do want and what they need. When they come to you guys as a free zone to set up, what are they asking for? That's a very good question. I think, you know, SMEs, there are some of them that want to start on a shoestring budget. There are some of them already who've got monetized products and services in the market. Some of them want to start and do a, 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 a exploration of the marketplace. So Rack is is really a powerhouse for SMEs. Today we've got over 20,000 companies. Um, more than 80% of those are SMEs. We're a powerhouse where we understand what their requirements are. We customize solutions. So really what they're looking for is whether they want to start on a shoestring budget or they, wanna, they have a product in the market, you've got to understand that they all want three main things. They want value for money. That's number one. And a cost-effective environment and ecosystem. Number two, they want what's written on the tin. So they want transparency and they want ease of doing business, easy setup, somebody to talk to, somebody to help them out, somebody to call when things are not going right. So customer experience is crucial, which is the, really the third thing that Rack has prized itself on. So cost-effective ecosystem, what's written on the tin, easy to do business with, transparent regulations, you name it. And then again, the customer experience. That's customized for their size, their business, and how they want to operate. You've got to understand that SMEs are no-nonsense people. They want to also tap into the marketplace. So this is something the Rackus helps them with, tapping into the marketplace. We could even go as far as doing concierge or, 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 or um, value-added services that are customized for them, enable them to plug and play and grow. When they speak to you and your team, what are their worries? What are their concerns? What do they ask you? A lot of SMEs, of course, what's, main, what's, what's, what's crucial for SMEs globally is funding. Some of them are on a shoestring budget, but also they need a special attention to being able to be funded to grow. So they're looking for investors. They're looking for ease of access to banking. They're looking for bank account opening. They're looking for um, um, private equity firms that could support them in terms of investments as well. So that ecosystem is very crucial. So they all ask about that. And second and foremost is, what's the point in being in a marketplace if they can't access the market? How do they get their products to market? How do they distribute? Where can they be to store their items or how can they manufacture or import, export? All of that legislation, all of those processes need to be very transparent. Those are the two most common questions. And then I think a lot of them now are also dealing with livability issues. Where do I live? Where do I send my kids to school? What's the lifestyle like? So those are the three main areas that I see really happening and asking my team and really their main concerns and ideas and what's being spoken about in the forums, in the meetings. What about things like hiring? Can they find the, the staff here that they need? Well, they're in the right place. I mean, the UAE is a melting pot for many different nationalities and a lot of talent coming from all over the world. So I think there's no uh, uh, issues with hiring the right people. I think everybody's involved. You've got to be here. You're working. They'll find the right talent at different salary scales or different different levels. So I think that here it's not a, um, a challenge that I hear. On contrary, you know, I think uh, SMEs um, um, will find the right talent in the UAE and the right person to do the right job. What about banking? Banking is very crucial, of course, whether it's an SME or a large corporate banking is very, but the focus is on 
how do you support SMEs? One thing at Rack is that we're doing, and one of our partners in banking, obviously, is uh, you know partners like Rack Bank, um, is really assist these customers in getting um, their bank account opening, their um, what the banks require, how they how they uh, what the, what they need to apply to get a bank uh, account opened, and we've even got consultants and my team on board helping them and holding their hands uh, through this process so that we can do it smoothly and the success rate of opening a bank account is much quicker, much faster, much easier. As I said earlier, what's written on the tin, you know, and I use that expression a lot, is really what we share with our clients and what we share with SMEs so they get it right the first time. What about the cost of operating? There's been, I mean, so much noise, so much rhetoric around the the cost of living, the cost of of business, inflation worldwide over the last year or, or so. What does it mean for the SMEs that you're dealing with? Well, that's 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 obviously um, transparency and being able to know what are the costs to run a business is very important. Comparing how you would run a business in the UAE to other parts in the world is very important. We share that information with SMEs to make the decision process much more calculated and they know what their budgeting is like. It's very important. The whole world expenses are going up. People still want value for money. So what at Rack is what we try to do is customize even our SME solutions. You can start on a shoestring budget. You can start as a one-man show. You can start in a business center. You can start with just a minimal type of operation. And then you can grow as you pick up momentum as your products and services, as your growth happens, you can start to add on. It's like building a pizza, you know, with different toppings. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's really a uh, very important um, uh, element for SMEs to be able to know the costs up front and then be able to build as you go and as they grow. Because cash flow is the biggie, isn't it, for small companies? Definitely. I mean, but there are, let's not forget the UAE is a very supportive environment. I mean, if you're talking about the ministries, um, uh, the Ministry of Economy or the uh, the uh, Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology, they all have different kind of programs that are supporting the SMEs, not only the private equity firms or the investors or angel investors that go to startups, but definitely the government of the UAE is very supportive of SMEs. Today, there are programs such as the um, uh, uh, um, uh, Fortune 100. Uh, there are programs such as uh, the, um, uh, there are the programs for SMEs that are in IT, in high tech, uh, next gen FDI, they call it. And there are many programs that support SMEs to start on a shoestring budget or to start small and grow. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, they're in the right place at the right time, as I said. And uh, we're there to support them all the way. Okay, so this is all very positive. Where are the risks and the challenges? What do they need to be mindful of? Well, similarly with any large corporation, it applies to an SME. You've got to know the market. You've got to know what solutions you need to provide. A lot of SMEs are very bullish. They come in, you know, they think this product's going to fly. They can sell it. But they haven't done their research. They haven't really looked at um, what the market conditions are like. They haven't looked at distribution channels. They haven't seen whether there's a need for their product or service or that type of product or service in that marketplace. So I think doing a lot of research up front and doing their homework up front is very crucial for SMEs. And I think where a lot of SMEs start to fail if they don't do the proper due diligence and homework to see whether their products or services are needed. And a lot of SMEs, I think, young, entrepreneurish, um, that say, I've got an idea, I've got a product, I can make this happen. But they've really got to see and customize and understand who's going to be their end user. So a lot of them come to this place not knowing that maybe they need to tweak it, customize it, change it, or make it adaptable for the different marketplaces that they're in. And I see that a lot happening. So they open up, they take a license, they start operating for a year, find that they don't have a distribution or a marketplace, and then they unfortunately shut down. And those that don't shut down, those that renew year two, year three, year four, what are they doing? What separates them? Firstly, what's separating them is they've got the right product and the service and they've done their diligence. They've also looked for assistance to get them into the marketplace. They've outsourced a lot of their business and focused on their core, 
I think outsourcing today is another SME growth factor in the UAE, whether it's logistics or e-commerce or distribution or storage. So it's plug and play was the old terminology, but right now it's how much of that business can you outsource is really very supportive as well. And that supports the whole ecosystem. We have an expression saying, give the bread to the baker. So I think a lot of those successful ones are doing that. They're finding the right talent as well as the right um, market um, and the right distribution channels. Um, a lot of them are obviously focusing on the right growing trend, uh, 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 growing industries as well. Like I mentioned earlier on, there's a lot of um, FMCG, there's a lot of um, personal goods, healthcare, nutrition, um, uh, well-being. Um, those are all growing and I think they're just in the right place at the right time in the right industry. Banking is very important as well. How do they deal with their financials? How are they really looking for a cost-effective place is one thing, but then again, having the right relationship with a bank, having the right relationship with funding, managing their cash flow, their budgets, their accounting. A lot of SMEs are really focusing on their products, so I'm seeing a lot of them um, uh, not with the level of experience from the financial point of view. So. Maybe it's a good idea for them to look at how they can outsource that and get support from external consultants and external facilitators in financial planning. Remy, you've mentioned banking there. What advice can you give someone about managing that banking relationship, about when to flag up issues and concerns? I think that's very crucial. Honesty, transparency builds the strengths of the relationship with your bank. Your bank is your side-by-side -side partner and you've really got to be transparent and open and today the UAE is in compliance is second to none with the central bank with banking compliance with economic zone compliance we're second to none in that area so compliance will filter the good from the bad as well so you might as well be transparent and upfront with the bank to build a good strength strong relationship, transparency in your applications, transparency in the, 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 the transactions that you have, being upfront with what you require with the bank and building that relationship is very crucial. Banks are ready to do that as well because they've got key account managers, they've got um, dedicated uh, um, um, staff that is taking care of SMEs as well and seeing what their needs because what's good for an SME is good for the bank and what's good for the bank is good for an SME. So I think transparency is very crucial. Another thing that I see that a lot of uh, SMEs really need to adopt right now is that we're all moving into the digital age. So digitization of their businesses is, is very crucial. If you don't digitize, you're going to be left behind. And banks are using digital uh, you know, um, terms of how they interact with their clients, how they interact with their customers. So being digitally savvy and doing digital integration in SME corp businesses is very crucial as well. And I see that starting to happen. The UAE is encouraging that because we're all going digital. I mean, today I think the, the UAE is a um, benchmarked platform for going digital. Digital transformation is everywhere. So if you don't digitally transform and you don't have that in your day-to-day -day process in your accessibility to your clients, in your relationship with your bank, I think you'll be left behind very quickly. Rami, we've seen a lot of changes in the last 12 months here in the UAE. We've seen corporate tax come in, for example. We've seen a lot more visas being made available. We've mm -hmm. seen changes to the gratuity system. We've got unemployment insurance. Which of these do you see as having the biggest impact on the SME sector? What do they need to be mindful of? Uh, what I see is this is all positive. In the first place, depends how you take it and you integrate it into your company. But it's all there so that there we build more transparency, more worker and employee security, more safeguarding the financial health of the SMEs in particular. But I think one of the areas that's going to be new, and it's all going through this right now, is where the corporate tax is. I think it's an educational and an iterative process where we're just going to have to go through it and see how it impacts business. But many other countries have been doing it for a long time, and there are a lot of financial consultants, and the banks know how to deal with this as well. So I think SMEs need to educate themselves on that application, how it applies to their product, because the law and the regulation in the federal tax has some income that's qualified, some income that's not qualified. And again, it's all going to support the growth of the SMEs. So I think that we've just got to educate ourselves and really see how it goes. 
Um, but I believe that that is the number one topic with a lot of SMEs is how they're going to start. But let's not forget that the UAE is also putting some regulations on thresholds to support SMEs. So not every SME out there, depending on their threshold, is going to have you know a hard time with corporate tax. Let's finish up with some advice for anyone looking at this market, whether they've got a company outside they want to bring in or an idea that they want to set up. What's the best thing that you can tell them to help it go as smoothly as possible? There are a lot of ways to set up a company in the UAE. I think the best thing is for them to do the research and to get the right facts and how and what they need when they want to set up their company and what they need this company license or what they need the structure and type of business, whether they want to be in a free zone, mainland or not. Get the right advice, do the homework, understand where your target market is. And I believe that don't uh, just um, go in thinking that there is a marketplace if you haven't done the research. Okay, I'm going to make that two pieces of, of advice because you've touched on an important topic there. How do you decide if you need to be a free zone or a mainland company? Well, actually, um, today the, um, the UAE regulations um, allows companies with 100% ownership to be in free zones or on the mainland. But I think the determining factor, from my point of view, is where are their products and services going to be distributed or sold or marketed to makes a very big difference in this, their choice. If they're doing it for import-export and going all over the world and not really looking in the, where the local markets are not of very high importance to them, then a free zone might be something that they would want to consider. But definitely, there are options in free zones that allow them to work in the mainland. And then if they're going to be working 100% solely on the mainland, I think then it's a no-brainer that they would have to be, you know, incorporating their companies on the mainland for that specific service and product. There you go. A lot of advice to take on board there. Remy, thank you so much for your time Pleasure. today. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Great, great. Thank you for having me again. And um, any other advice I can give? I'm ready to do it all over. <laughs> Rami Jalad is CEO of Razel Khaimah Economic Zone, or Rikez, speaking to us here on the SME Souk podcast. SME Souk podcast, brought to you by Rackbank Business. Your business matters.